day, like any other. Just like every now and then, I went to check the current mayor perks, as if they were going to give me a reason to care about this game once more. However, this time it's different. A face I never seen before, by the name of... Fine... Gun... Yeah, sure, I'm just gonna go with that. Well, I ignored the first perk, since it's about manual farming and I'm not a psychopath. I ignored the second perk, since it's about manual farming and I'm not a psychopath. The third perk was saying something about getting pelts. And you see, I think I might just be the biggest psychopath of all of them. Okay, so at the time I had no idea what pelts are and why would I need them, but 50% more? Well, that seems important. Plus, it wasn't the first time I would hear the name Trevor. Okay, well, the first time I kinda mistaken him for just another random NPC and left after merely exchanging an awkward stare, but when, if not now, was the best chance to give it another go? And thanks to that awkward interaction, I actually knew where to look. At the foot of the highest mountain. Yo, Trevor, long time no see. Huh? Do you remember the last time we met? Don't worry about this. It's not like I ignored you on purpose. I was just a little busy, you know? Anyway, how have you been? All that time in the cave, it must have been hard. His reply? Very laconic. All I got was a rarity, location, and a timer of 10 minutes. Which I assumed was all you needed to know, if you're gonna just assume I will know what all of that even means, which I didn't, but it was fine because it's high pixel and you can just teleport around, plus the whole thing turned out to be not that hard at all. I found the location, I found a mob with a name tag, giving me confirmation that was indeed the target of my operation, so without hesitation I used my sort of obliteration. The whole thing took me in 30, I got rewarded with entire 3 pelts and went back to pass on the good news. Um, yo, Trevor, I did what you asked for. Could I maybe get some more explanation on what exactly is it all about? He replied, rather short, with rarity, location, and a timer of 10 minutes. And, well, I think he's rude to act as if he knows somebody based off just the first two interactions, but yeah, it really seems like that's all there is to it. You get a location, you go kill them up, that's it. <laughs> that's the whole thing. Just to be sure though, I did it one more time, which took 50 seconds, I got rewarded with 12 pelts this time, and went back, only to, without a surprise, be met with rarity, location, and a timer of 10 minutes. Which probably would be the end of that rather short story. If the rarity I got wasn't endangered, we just sounded like it's gonna give you a lot of pelts, and the location for the first time I was actually familiar with, I mean, come on, I just need to go there and back, how much is that, 5 seconds? It was 30 seconds which was my new record. Not that it matters or anything, since, like I said, it was my last go anyway. However, quickly before I left, I decided to look around, just to make sure I'm not missing something important. And, first of all, turned out I was right about the rarity, because apparently there are five with endangered being almost on top of the list. As for pelts themselves, well, I was right as well, because I don't think you can think of less important currency. It seemed like the only use was unlocking tier 12 farming minions, which if all of them added together would account for maybe one third of one additional minion slot, which then after investing millions of coins and 10 years later will transfer in maybe half percent more profits. In short, means nothing. But okay, let's don't forget that's the whole point of Hypixel, spending thousands of hours on meaningless things. And if you think about it in the end, that could be said of anything else. The difference is that you can spend weeks trying to achieve things that eventually will mean nothing, while I was already halfway unlocking the first minion. I mean, come on, I just need to go there and back a few more times and I won't have to touch this ever again. How much is that? 30 minutes? Okay, so I think I'm starting to crack it down. So there are six possible locations, right? Starting with Desert Settlement. Just a couple of houses, there's nowhere to hide, the game is basically handing you free money. It goes similar with Overgrown and Glowing Cave, despite a much larger area to cover, usually it comes down to just following one standard route and encountering your mob on the way, although there can be some extreme cases where you're gonna feel like you checked everywhere and the mob just isn't there. The same cannot be said about Oasis and Mushroom Gorge, also known as Hell. The extreme case where you can't find your mob? Well, that's the norm here. These places are just huge with million spots to hide and honestly, if you're not gonna find your mob in the first minute or two, just give up. Because you are not finding it in this lifetime. 
Oh yeah, there's also Desert Mountain, however I'm gonna be real with you, I have no idea how to classify this one. One time it feels like you have to travel across the world to find your mob, the other time it's waiting at your door and most of the time it's just committing suicide so you don't even have to do anything. So yeah, I don't know, it's just a loader I guess. But anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, you're right, unlocking the minions, the whole point I'm doing this in the first place. Well, I slightly underestimated how long it will take to get enough pelts for all the minions, but I'm not complaining, it's low-key kind of fun, actually. You know, it's like when you don't know what to do with yourself, so you just kind of teleport around main hub with no purpose. But if that was actually the purpose, to go around with no purpose. And not to say I did it just for fun, I did a decent progress as well, and it shouldn't take too long now that i become basically an expert at it. But it was then, when I noticed another NPC in the corner I must have missed before, that was about to change everything. In terms of this mini game, obviously, looking at the whole game, it's just as meaningless, if not more. For items. A talisman, slightly boosting the spawn rate of endangered and elusive animals, on paper, seems amazing. After you do math, it's basically spending $5 on a $1 discount. But okay, however you may look at it, it is another unique talisman which is gonna boost my stats by another 0.1%. Listen, I had to have it. Next, a belt. A pelt belt, if you will. Giving you a flat bonus amount of pelts per every kill. On paper, seems amazing. After you do math, even more amazing. Listen, I had to have it. And then there was a travel scroll to the Trevor. If you play Hypixel, that's all you need to know. If you don't, basically it gives you an access to a command that will teleport you to travel from wherever you are. On paper, seems amazing. And you wouldn't think that would be what almost made me give up on the whole thing on the spot. So there was only one thing I could describe as mildly annoying in the whole process, and I know this is gonna sound like I was addicted, because I was, but it was when sometimes out of nowhere Trevor would say, hey, sorry, I don't have any animals for you to hunt, come back soon. <laughs> what do you mean you don't have any animals? Do you realize you are literally just a code in a video game, you can have as many as you want? Luckily, it wasn't happening very often, and when it did, the wait time was only a couple of seconds, so I didn't make a big deal out of it. However, it all changed after I bought that travel scroll. Now it was happening after every single kill and the wait time was way longer than before, which made me realize that it wasn't random. There was a set cooldown and I've simply become too fast. I thought you'd be fine with waiting like a second or two, but no, every time it was like 10 seconds at least, which for my ADHD brain could as well be. A freaking eternity. I mean, obviously there was an option to just ignore it altogether and go back to the way I was doing this up to this point, but at that point I would be just deliberately wasting time and, come on, wasting time on the thing that is already meant to be a waste of time was no longer justifiable. Which, I'm not gonna lie, was a call I needed to come back to my senses, reflect on what is that I really want to achieve from all this, log onto my second account and start playing both of them at the same time, faster, stronger and more efficient than ever before, nobody could stop me now, myself included, my brain decided that's what we are doing today and I had no power to oppose him. Okay, you may say, hold up a second, what about the fourth item? Did I miss it? Did I forgot about it? Well, I was kinda hoping not to talk about it. I mean, I did see it, I did read the description, which was a little confusing, but more or less I understood the point. What I didn't understand is why the hell would I need it? I mean, my runs were already going great, and the last thing I needed was doing math in the middle of 20 second hunt. But okay, eventually, out of pure curiosity, I did buy it. However, that made me even more confused. It did what it said it would. The problem is, the thing it said it would say was saying nothing. The height approximation was barely helpful at all and they never even said which angle we are talking about. You mean left, right, up, down, in relation to what? To where I look? To the north? To the horizon? <laughs> you know, there is at least a couple of angles we could be talking about. 
Well, eventually I did figure out they were talking about vertical angle from the height level you are currently at to the hunted mob, but that made me even more confused. Wait, so that's not give you the same information as height? Because once you get on the same level, it's always going to show from 0 to 5, no? So a high angle would mean you are not on the same height and low angle would mean you are pretty close to the same height. And once you get on the same height, the mob still can be anywhere. <laughs> like what? Oh, also there's 10 second cooldown, so even if it was useful, using it still seems like a waste of time. <laughs> and it doesn't even seem useful. And so after convincing myself, I simply just wasted 80 pounds for nothing, I decided to move on and never speak of it ever again. <sighs> However, I did speak of it. Just now. Which must mean I'm not very smart and clearly did not understand this simple yet powerful device. And it's going to stay that way for a while. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not very fast at figuring stuff out. Usually I just sit and smash rocks against each other until sometimes out of nowhere an idea will randomly pop up in my head, which then in a matter of seconds spirals in a full-fledged plan. Well, of course it isn't going to work if I'm not gonna use it properly. I did what made the most sense to my small brain, which is go to the location where I'm supposed to go and then use it. That gives you like billion possible answers. It's dumb, you don't want to do that. You want to go far to gain perspective, but not too far, so the entire location becomes so small it gets rounded to non-existence. Cool, now those numbers actually mean something. Not always though. If you can see a long horizontal strip of land, get rid of it. In a sense, change your location. Unfortunately, you are one dimensional, so you want your dimension to have as much variety as possible, so that each combination of numbers will represent a small distinctive area. And now, using math, you can actually determine almost exact location of your mob. The problem is, doing math takes time. You don't want to do math. And that's why the next time you go to the same exact spot. And if you're gonna get the same numbers, that's easy. You already know where that is. From now on, this will be your reference point on which you can start building an imaginary map. It may seem like a lot of work remembering all those numbers, but in reality, you barely need to remember anything. After a couple of runs, you should already automatically be associating a certain height with a certain area. And if it's a big area, you just need to look at the second number to clarify which part of it is it. I mean, obviously, the results are not going to be super precise because one, these are not the exact numbers, but only approximation, and two, it's impossible to pick a perfect spot in which none of the numbers will be overlapping. But in the vast majority of the cases, it worked like a charm, and as soon as I realized that, I forgot about pelts and everything else I was doing and started playing my own game, in which I would use a tracker once, and then, based on that numbers, I would picture a place in my head where I thought the mob was at the beginning with the help of F3, but after gaining enough data, all I needed was sometimes a single number to in a fraction of a second already know almost exact location of the mob. 6025, that is back on the back. I become basically a god using telepathy or something, I could see everything everywhere. And it was so fun that at some point getting easy locations and therefore basically free pelts started feeling like a waste of time because I would have to waste time going there and back instead of playing literally the best game mode on Hypixel. 86, see that is below us. On the stairs. Yep. 70, that's a cave, that's a cave. Mushroom Gorge, exactly here. Mushroom Gorge, exactly here. <laughs> he didn't even have a chance to suffocate. I'm so good. On the stairs on the right, right here. Desert Salomon Bori. Oh, Aces, let's go. That is like a noise. Oh, it died. Over the course of next four days, I spent in total about 11 hours playing this mini game, and probably would have spent more, but next elections were closed, and sadly, Fine Gun was no longer a mayor. I mean, you can still do it, even if he's not a mayor, it's just that the cooldown is one minute, so to don't waste any time waiting, I would have to be playing on like four accounts at the same time, and no, I I'm not that crazy. In that 11 hours, in total, I earned about half a billion worth of pelts, which at some point I started converting into uncommon talismans, but at another point I realized I'm buying so many, it's going to take years to sell them, so I stopped. 
However, if you want a talisman with a bunch of pelts on it, in case they ever are going to add more rarities to it, I guess slash AH something LT. Also, apparently, if you would add both of the accounts in a few hours, I got to the top 10 on the leaderboard on the whole server, despite the game not existing for I don't know how long, which is kind of fun, I guess. So what did we learn today? To never judge a book by its cover? That everything you will do eventually will mean nothing anyway? Or maybe that sometimes all you need to have fun is some coordinates and a little imagination? Well, I don't know, I got to play a god for a second, which was fun. Thanks for watching, goodbye.